This week, Geo Heath is on a roll during the Texas late season. This style of hunt that Mike puts on is right up my alley. Dr. Deer discusses the most important tools you'll need to provide for your whitetail herd. It's some really exciting times for deer management. And Stan Potts answers your questions about quivers. Today I want to talk to you about bow quivers. All this and more on North American Whitetail Television. And now, here are your hosts, Stan Potts and Pat Hogan. Folks, thanks for tuning in to North American Whitetail this week. We're glad you're here. Got a great show for you. Geo is headed to South Texas, and you're going to see South Texas is a target-rich environment. That's right. I think Geo, you know, he's going down there with a rifle. Something tells me he may get a little bow action too, Stan. We've got some great segments for you guys on From the Stan. Stan's going to be talking about quivers, you know, whether you keep them on your bow or take them off when you shoot. James Kroll and I are going to be wrapping up our series on whitetail nutrition. We're talking about the tools of the trade, stuff you got to have. All right, here we go. Hunt with a good friend of mine, Mr. Mike White, owner and operator of First Shot Outfitters right there in Texas. We're going to be on about 6,000 acre ranch, pushing up, you know, late January, which is great. Uh, this is the good thing about hunting these whitetails in Texas in this time of year. They're possibly still rutting. It's going to be cold. Looking forward to this hunt. It's going to be a good one. Talking to Mike before I got there, he highly recommended bring both weapons. You know, I have the rifle and bow in tow. One thing that, you know, talking with him and just some things he kept beating on was his management practices. And, you know, he's got hogs running around, he's got does running around, we got management bucks running around. If it gives us the time and, and we can get on one, we're going to try to get it done. We just came across a wheat field. I bet you there was 150, 200 deer on probably six or eight big shooters. Man, we're just trying to do some management right now. He's got a bunch of tags to fill. You know, this style of hunting that Mike puts on is right up my alley. Uh, one thing we first talked about was let's get on the ground, you know, do a little ground and pound action. He said, let's try to stalk a doe, which, you know, you, you throw a doe into the mix, things can get kind of squirrely, but going back to the management practices and what Mike's doing, the buck to doe ratio, it's tight on this ranch. We're seeing big bucks. We're obviously seeing some good does. And he said, hey, let's get down there. Let's try to stalk one and get one on the ground. We come around the bend and game's on. We got a doe coming up. We just need to get set up and hopefully get a shot on it. Me. She's down. She's down. On the books. Man, hot dog. On the books right there. Something else that's great about Texas is a program called the Texas Hunters for the Hungry program. Mike also helps out with that. So in the management practices and knocking these does down, we're taking them right to the bank, you know, help out with the hungry. It, what a better way to help on the management side of things, help the buck to doe ratio, and feed some people on the backside. I'm telling you, man, that's what it's about up here on this ranch. We've, uh, we've seen the bucks, and he's got the buck to doe ratio up roughly two to one. And that's just management over the years, 15 years on this ranch, 12 or 15. And that's what it's all about, man. Y'all saw that field back there loaded up, tons of deer, tons of bucks, tons of does. And that's what we were after right here. They are giving us a run for our money. Made it happen to got some meat, got a doe, helped out with the management. One, one good thing about the whole spot stalk side of things that Mike really caters to is the way this, this ranch is laid out, the mesquite flats and the brush. And I'll tell you what, one thing that caught our eye was some pigs running. And I mean, these groups, we were seeing groups like 10 to 15 hogs and we put our eyes on a group we knew was in a good position to put a stalk on. Mike's like, let's go. He said, get behind me, we're gonna get in here, we'll get a shot on these hogs. You know, right here, man, Mike puts me right in the back door. You know, how bad these things wreck his ranch. You got fence problems up there rooting. They got root in the ground. You know, you get trucks coming in, you know, possibly some other farm equipment. They're just absolutely destructive. And uh, as many hogs as we can get down from Mike, we'll do it. There's obviously a lot on these ranches and uh, I'm more than happy to help out with it. Whoa, right there, pigging. You hear him. Lights out again, man, right here, spot and stalk with Mike. We came in here, had it probably 200. Look at that, look at that other one. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Yep, another one, down, right there. <laughs> Woo, hogs on the flats right here, boys. This is what it's all about, spotting and stalking. Man, deer, hogs, they're going everywhere. That's probably clean of about 20 of them. Good gracious. Woo. <laughs> Good stuff right there. Right here, man. Don't get much better than this, spotting and stalking. Pig number 
said, yeah, three or four. Saw a big one and then got on uh, what we killed two, spot and stomping. That's good stuff. We go get in the rig and throw this fatty up in it. Golly, man, that's fun. That was a bunch of them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> North American Whitetail, brought to you by Mossy Oak. North American Whitetail, brought to you by Thompson Center Arms. Muzzy Moment, presented by Muzzy, bad to the bone. This week's Muzzy Moment comes to us courtesy of the South Lake Minnetonka Police Department. Officers at the Minnesota Police Department were dispatched around 8.30 a.m. on a morning in early February to assist with two white-tailed bucks whose antlers were locked in the woods near a residential area. When officers Ricky Syrie and James Wareham arrived on the scene, it was clear that one of the bucks had already expired, but the other still had plenty of fight remaining. Using a pair of reciprocating saws, the officers were able to cut through one of the buck's main beams, providing enough room for the deer to free itself. Exhausted from trying to free itself, the buck rested momentarily before hightailing it for the safety of the woods. Thanks to officers Syrie and Wareham for helping a buck in need. And thanks to the South Lake Minnetonka Police Department for sharing the amazing footage. And as always, if you encounter unusual whitetail behavior, be sure to let us know by sending an email to whitetail at imoutdoors.com. Stan, another great Muzzy moment. It never fails to surprise me year after year some of the stuff that we get from our viewers. One of my favorite segments. Hey folks, we're gonna head back to Texas with Geo, but first, this week's Dr. Deer segment and Pat and James are talking about you don't always have to have a big tractor to get your stuff done on your property. Dr. Deer, presented by Buck Forage, the preferred forage for whitetails. Well, James, we've made a lot of headway in our pillars of whitetail nutrition discussion, yep. and yep. we've covered a lot of the, the core elements. You know, we talked about native forage and mass, we've talked about food plotting, uh, we've talked about supplemental feed and minerals. Um, but it's one thing to have a strategy for providing overall uh, balanced whitetail nutrition. It's another thing to execute that strategy, and you gotta you gotta have the right tools. Right. That said, not everybody has the same resources. No. Uh, but fortunately, in, in today's hunting environment, you've got a lot of options. Oh, I guarantee you have a lot of options. And what I always tell folks is, well, there's a will, there's a way. I guarantee where there's a will, there's a way. We we even have a friend that was telling us earlier today about planting a buck for oats with a rototiller. He got it done, he killed a deer. I mean, hey, where there's a will, there's a way. But seriously, it's been some really exciting times for deer management, especially in regard to food plots. We've seen companies come forward with scaled down equipment that costs far less and do a great job for you than the big equipment that we used to have to buy. Now that being said, the big equipment is also valuable. I mean, right, right here we've got, we've got a great Kubota tractor. Oh, very useful. With a big unit, a big Golden Valley cedar on the back of it. Um, yeah. That'll, that'll definitely get the job done. Yeah. But both of these companies make options for you. So we've got a smaller RTV right. unit made by Kubota, and yeah. we can pull a smaller cedar also made by Golden Valley behind it. You've got two options there. Right, and basically what you're gonna need is you're gonna need something to put out fertilizer, you're gonna need something to mow, and you're gonna need something to tear up the ground and put out seed. That's basically what you're gonna need. Uh, and the nice thing about about like like the Golden Valley equipment is that it does everything in one pass. Yeah, that's really nice. It saves a lot of a lot of uh, time and money to do that. Now you can you, I always tell people you got three choices in equipment. You can buy it, you can lease it, and you can share it. The one that's happening the most nowadays is sharing. There are, are folks that have got land and are friends with each other. They're already cooperatively managing in a general area, uh, general area. And so they pool together, buy the equipment, and then they share. They even have uh, food plot planting days. Now getting your food plots in the ground is just part of the equation, and, and mowing is just part of the equation. Uh, you know, we, we've talked a lot about feeders and supplemental feed. Right. Uh, modern feeders will last forever. Uh, oh yeah, especially the boss buckets. It's, uh, it's made out of material that I guarantee you that's gonna be here when you and I are long gone. Yeah, so you know you might have the option of building your own feeder, but if you want it to last, uh, as yeah. we do, uh, yeah. you need to look at some of these new models. Um, right. You know, our boss buck feeders, those things are gonna last 30, 40 years. A long time. 
Love um, that. Last but not least, uh, we've talked about banking forage. Right. Um, explain why an electric fence, though it is an upfront investment, why that can be a really valuable aspect of your management plan. Well, electric fence is one of the, the great new ideas we've had. And what it allows you to do is it, it allows you to get your food plot up past its critical sensitive stage when deer will eat it when they really don't need to eat it. They've got food out there, but it's ice cream to them. Sure. So you can protect your, plot, your crop till it gets up. The other thing is, is you can regulate when your deer get to feed on it. And in, in some parts of the north, what we do is we keep our, our food plot uh, plants protected all the way into the late fall and early winter and then let the deer in as, as an emergency food. So that works very well. So we're banking forage there. And as far as the equipment, I have equipment that we used in the late 70s that's still using today, so it's an awfully good investment. Absolutely. I'm Pat Hogan. And I'm James Cole. This is North American Whitetail. North American Whitetail, brought to you by Kubota Tractors. North American Whitetail, brought to you by Golden Valley. We've been putting our eyes on a lot of good deer and uh, sitting there kind of discussing strategy with Mike. He said, hey man, let's go hit up this flat. He says, one particular area, he said, I've seen some good bucks in, but with it being January, you know, we're sitting here late rut, real cold conditions, there's no telling what could filter in. So I mean, we could have a buck that we've never seen before, Mike's never seen come rolling in, or one of those local bucks that he has seen, we might get a crack at one of those. You know, we're sitting on set and uh, we'd already seen some good deer. And we're sitting there kind of glassing and right off that ravine, just like Mike played the script, man, this buck comes bowling out and he's dogging a doe. So we got this buck that pops out on us. Mike looks at him, we kind of dissect him real quick. I'm over there in the blind, I get my gun up, I get the crosshair settled and one thing about it, we're sitting here in the rut, man, we got a doe out in front of him. We know this buck's about to take off. As you know, he starts bowling across the field. We got to stop him, get everything settled and make the shot. <laughs> Right here, baby, making a little in Texas with Mike. This is it right here, man. We uh, we just let it eat at about 250. And uh, man, we start out this morning. He's up. He's up. Talk to Mike. Uh, we're we're going to do it now. We're going back down. He's going back down. He's down. He's down right there. Sorry, guys, I had to take a little time out on that. Just you don't want a buck like that to get away. We're out here. This is straight up free range getting after it. You know, we're sitting there and this buck's out at like 280, maybe 300 yards and closing the distance after we got him down. When I finally walked up on this thing, he was a giant. I mean, incredible buck, exactly what Mike raises out there. That's why he's doing all the management side of things. The buck to doe ratio is right on. And it's just got a phenomenal ranch. I'm telling you, this was a smoker buck. Oh yeah. Look at that right there. Yeah, I mean, look at the trash right here, man. That's what it's all about when he popped out. We had a smaller buck come in busted earlier. And I guarantee you this bad boy right here, wow, I just got another one. He, uh, he kicked him out. Whew. Yes, he is, real old. We've been after it, man. I mean, just, just getting after it. Uh, one thing, you know, Mike, we did this in the blind tonight. One thing he's known for is getting on the ground and grinding and pounding and chasing these deer, spotting stalks. And it just worked out. It, he's not hunting this set, what, two weeks? Two weeks. And we, we are hunting another chocolate horn deer, and then obviously, you never know out here, man. We hunt 6,000 acres. You never know what's going to roll in, but hey, we hit the honey hole right here. This is all good. Look at that trash. <laughs> oh, man. Woo! -hoo -hoo. About 200, 250 yards. So we get this incredible trophy buck down with Mike, and uh, he said, hey, man, he said, you're still in the saddle. He said, you got that bow. Let me go stick you in one of my ground blinds, and he's got some management deer coming in. And there's just one particular deer that they've been seeing for about three years. He's a six, he's always been a six, and Mike's like, if he comes in, take him. I got one spotted back here, probably about 300 yards in this bottom. We're literally about 400 yards out right and left in this big bowl. He comes up from a big wheat field, funnels right in here. And I like this area, it's shamed up early. Uh, we got about two hours till dark, but that's good. We've already got movement going, so hopefully she'll slip in here and we can uh, let her eat this evening. So I'm sitting there chilling this blind, man, just glassing a little bit and look out. There he is. He comes swinging in, you know, right to left. He clears the blind. I think he's gone. 
I look out the back side, he's 50 yards and this just joker's coming in hot. And I just got the bow, sat there, wanted to settle the pin, get a good draw on him, hopefully get her done. Right there, man, that's a big old six right here. We've done it, we've seen it all right there. Dad, we got the big buck, we got the hogs. Man, we just pounded that deer. That's awesome. That is awesome. Plenty of daylight. Whew, man, that happened fast. Boy, I was sitting there, we got the cows surrounding us. I looked up, saw two does come over. He was actually dogging, we're gonna be kind of a late rut situation. There's still some does that are still hot, but that joker came in. And that's it. Whew, lights out. What a hunt, man. That's what it's all about right there. Big, big, big six. White belly. Yes, sir. Big six. Big six. Got it done with the stick and string, man. Look at this thing. Whew. Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that right there. Piled him up. Had that little quarter and away two shot. Check that out. Exactly what Mike wants out of here, man. This right here, he was actually quartered a little bit away, sucked it in right there, came off this off shoulder. He ran probably about 200 yards and that's it. But hey, that's my first six. What a run here in Texas. First shot outfitters, man. We, uh, we slammed a giant deer uh, with the rifle, got on a great buck Mike stuck me on. And, man, we've been pounding the pigs, killed three hogs the other day, cleaned up on a doe, and now a big six. So I'm gonna say this show is over, the end. It's been a heck of a ride here in Texas. Can't thank Mike, Monica, and the rest of the family. Enough for having me down here, man. It's been a great ride. Heck of a hunt, Texas. Check that out. Hey, folks, back. Geo South Texas, trophy buck, doe, management, hogs. What did I tell you? Target rich environment. I mean, he pretty much painted that ranch red, Stan. Hey, coming up, we got a great big buck profile for you. But first, our From the Stand segment. This week, Stan's going to be talking about quivers. Do you keep them on your bow or do you take them off when you're shooting? From the Stand, presented by Millennium Tree Stands. Comfort to hunt all day, all season. You know, from the Stand segment today, I want to talk to you about bow quivers. A lot of people shoot with their bow quiver on their bow, and a lot of people shoot with the quiver off. It's personal preference. I personally shoot with my quiver on. But what you got to understand is, is if you shoot with it off, then you practice and shoot all the time with it off, and vice versa if you shoot with it on. And another thing, when you're choosing a bow quiver, always look for a quiver. This is a true bow quiver, in my opinion. It's one of the best. The rock solid. But choose a quiver that fits on your bow solidly that doesn't make any noise. A lot of quivers out there, I'm telling you, when you shoot your bow with it on, it makes noise. And you gotta remember, if you shoot with your quiver off your bow, when you're up in the tree, I'm telling you, if you ever have to get that second arrow, it's not gonna be as convenient as what it would be if this quiver is on your bow. But still, it's a personal preference whether you shoot with the quiver on or whether you shoot with the quiver off. North American Whitetail, brought to you by Analogix Outdoors. North American Whitetail, brought to you by Ozonix. Big Buck Profile, brought to you by True Glow. I'd never seen this buck before. It was a highlight when he came through. The neighbor had, had him on trail camera pictures and kept it pretty quiet. And after I shot him, he let me know that he had pictures of him and I found out where some of the sheds are that the deer had two years pri previous to me shooting him. The guy's got the sheds and the year before I shot him, he's got the sheds also. I underestimated the score when I called up my cousin and told him he's an avid hunter and called him up and, or text him is what I did. He was out in his deer stand and I texted him. I said, I think I got a 17180 class deer here. Well, <laughs> it turned out to be a lot more than that. I had him in the Minnesota Deer Classic, and there, yes, I did get a lot of looks, and 
I heard the rumors when I'd walk. I always stood about 10 feet back, and if anyone had questions, and they'd say, I heard some of the, well, that's a game farm deer, that's how I fence deer, and you know. I got two boys coming up, and I want to see them do something like I did. This has been a prestige of mine that I'm never going to forget this moment because, well, for one, it was on our home farm, and Dad was part of it, so I'll never forget it. Stan, another great big buck profile this week. You know, we've been doing this for 13 years now, I think, and these big antlers just never get old. Never get old. Folks, thanks for tuning in this week. Come right back next week. Pat and I are both headed to Kentucky. So from all of us here at North America Whitetail, see you next week. Don't forget, check us out, NorthAmericanWhitetail.com, and you might want to keep it. Closed captioning for North American Whitetail, provided by Hunter Safety System. But first, we're going to be talking about... That's <laughs> you! He's talking about you. I'm not the one messing it up. Hey, once I started, he was already back there. Alright, we'll do one more All right, for you.